In today's video, I'm going to share 10 things every Procreate beginner should know about the Procreate gallery. By the end of this video, you will be a pro when it comes to the gallery and hopefully you will start using stacks and you'll know how to select multiple canvases, you'll know how to preview all your canvases, lots of good stuff coming up ahead. Hello and welcome to Color with Kendi. If you watched any of my previous videos, you know I like to make videos where you can follow along. So they are a little bit of a slower pace. I think that's the best way to learn. But if you would like to watch this at a higher speed, just change that in the settings. Let's get into it. Okay, so to follow along, open up Procreate. And the first thing you see is your gallery and your gallery will look different from mine because it depends on what you have in there. If you're a complete beginner and this is the first time you're opening Procreate, you probably won't see anything except the sample artworks. So let me talk a little bit about the different features in the gallery and how you can use it to your advantage. So the first thing any beginner should know is how to create a new canvas. So in Procreate, all of these are called canvases. They're basically your Procreate files. To create a new Procreate canvas, just go into the corner where it has a plus sign and tap on it. And you'll be able to create a new canvas from here. Now I see a lot of beginners use the screen size canvas. My suggestion is to not do this. And I'll tell you why. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to tap on screen size. No issue with the size, but I do have an issue with the settings. So to see the settings of any canvas, go and open your actions menu and then go to canvas and then go to canvas information. Here you can tap on dimensions. So here you see the dimensions and you'll see the DPI. DPI is dots per inch and it tells you the resolution. Here's my issue with this. If you use screen size, which is what a lot of beginners do, if you go and print your artwork, it's not going to look good. And you're going to be wondering, well, I spent hours making this. It looks great on the screen, but it doesn't print well because the DPI sucks. 132 is not a good DPI for printing. You need that to be 300 for printing. So that is why I suggest don't use screen size. Just use a different size. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's go back to gallery. And now we're back in the gallery and let's create a new canvas together that is going to work for printing. So tap on this, tap on this here, and you will create a new canvas. And now you have the option to create a canvas of any size that you want, whatever works for you. And you have a 300 DPI canvas. So what I like to do is use an 8x10. So if you follow any of my videos, I always use an 8x10 because that gives me the option of printing an 8x10 art print, which looks quite nice in my home. So I go to inches, I tap on 8, then 10. It's 300 DPI, so it will definitely print well. And you can change the settings here. If you want something bigger, you definitely can. I don't suggest making a canvas too small because then again, it doesn't print well. And what I would suggest is any canvas that you have made a custom canvas, call it a name and that will become your preset. So I'll just call this eight by 10 preset. So the next time I want to create a custom canvas, I can just tap on the preset. I'll show you where that is. So just tap on create. And there we go we have a custom canvas. So I'm going to go back to the gallery now because this video is talking about the gallery. So let me just go back to the gallery. And remember we made that custom preset. So if you ever want to use that again, just tap on plus and you will see your preset right there. So it definitely is quite useful to have that preset available. Okay. So that's the most important thing about the gallery, creating new custom canvases. The next thing I wanted to show you is how to preview your canvases straight from the gallery. So let's say you are trying to go through multiple files and you want to see them in detail. Instead of going into the file by tapping on it and then having to leave the file by tapping on gallery, the faster way to do this is to get into the preview mode. And to do that, all you have to do is take two fingers and just pinch outwards. Well, I guess it's not pinching, it's just moving them outwards like that and it will show preview mode and it takes a couple seconds for it to become really clear and now you can zoom in and move around and see your artworks 
And if you want to see multiple artworks, just use a finger and swipe through. This is a really great way to see all the artwork that you have on your iPad. And just swipe. This is an empty one, empty. And that way you can see what you have. And if you want to go into a particular canvas, just double tap and it will open that canvas for you. And now you can paint in it and do whatever you want in it. So the other thing I wanted to show you is how to delete a canvas. At some point, you're going to have a lot of different files and you're going to want to clean them up. So to delete a single canvas, all you need to do is go to that canvas, swipe to the left with your finger and tap on delete. And it will ask you if you want to delete this artwork because you can't undo this. So be very careful because you can't undo this and then tap on delete and it will delete it for you. Now, if you are trying to clean up a lot of different files and you need to delete a bunch of different files, the fastest way to do this is to tap on select and then select the ones that you want to delete and then tap on delete here. And it will delete those three artworks. So that's how you can delete. And I'm going to exit this mode by pressing on the X. The next thing we're going to talk about is duplicating a canvas. So let's say I have a particular canvas that I want to create a copy of. What's the fastest way to do that? Go in with one finger, swipe to the left, and then tap on duplicate. And you will create a copy of that canvas. Now let's talk about stacks. So let's say you have a bunch of different files and you want to put them all together so that they're a little bit more organized. You can create a stack. So these are all coloring pages. I want them all to be together. So start off by taking one of the files, putting your finger on it and then dragging it onto the other file. And you've created a stack. It will say stack. You can rename it by tapping and I'm going to call this coloring pages. And now I can move in other files into this stack. So I'm going to tap on select. I'm going to select this. I'm going to select this. And then what I'm going to do is using my finger, grab it, get into the stack, make sure the stack opens. If it doesn't open, this won't work. Make sure the stack opens and then drop it. And now I have four of these files in my coloring paid stack. I can go back to the gallery I'll close this and now they're all together in a stack. So it's kind of like a folder, but it's called a stack in Procreate and you can name it and you can put as many files as you want. I'm not sure if there's a limit. There might be, but I have never encountered that limit. So you can definitely use stacks to organize your Procreate gallery. So I have a stack for each of my brush sets. So it's just a great way to organize your Procreate gallery. Now you might be wondering, how do I take something out of a stack? Because it doesn't seem that easy. So I'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to go into the stack and let's say I want to take this bird out. For some reason, I don't want it to be there. So go in with my finger and then grab it and then go up here until coloring pages is selected. And now I can drag it here or I can drag it here. I can drop it wherever I want. Well, I, oh, I created another stack. So, oops. So let me show you this again. So grab it and then make sure that word is highlighted and then just drop it. There we go. So now I have dropped it. And this is basically how you can remove something from a stack. So the next thing I wanted to talk about is the select function, which I already showed you before, but I wanted to talk a little bit more in detail. So tap on select. And basically when you tap on select, what you can do is you can select whatever you want and you have a bunch of different options here. You can stack them so it will create a stack for you automatically. You can preview them. You can share them, you can duplicate them, you can delete. So this is a great way to do the same command to multiple canvases. So let's say I wanted to preview all of those. Just tap on preview and it will open up the preview for me. So definitely quite handy. Now let's talk about how to share a canvas. So there are a bunch of different ways to do this. So if you go into a particular file, you can share the file from here by going to the actions menu and then tapping on share and then sharing from here. 
I find that sometimes this is not the most ideal if I am trying to share multiple different files because then I have to go into every single file. You don't have to do this. You can do it straight from the gallery. So let's say I wanted to share all of the coloring pages here and share it to my desktop. I can tap on select and then it can select all of these and then I can tap on share and I can select the format that I want and it will share all of those together. And it will be separate files, of course, but it's just doing the work one time rather than doing it for three different files. Okay, so I'm gonna go back by tapping here. Now let's say you wanted to share just one file, you don't wanna share multiple files. The fastest way to do this is with one finger, swipe to the left and tap on share. And then you have an option to share in whichever file format you want. I will typically share as a Procreate file if I'm sharing it with someone else who has Procreate, or I will share as a PNG. That's typically what I do, sometimes PDF, but I don't really use the others. The next thing I wanna talk about is the import function. So there is an option here to import. You can tap on this. And what you can do is you can import files that you already have on your iPad. So I have this particular photo here. I wanna import it. I just tap on that and it will import it into its own canvas. So if I go back to gallery, you can see that it's its own canvas. So you can import files such as Procreate files, but you can also import photos directly from your photo gallery by clicking on photo. And it will open up your photo gallery and you can select any image. I have lots of pictures of my cats. This is my cat, Kendi. I'm gonna select that and it will import it straight into Procreate. So now let's go back to the gallery by tapping on gallery. And now let's talk about how you can rename your canvases because at some point you're gonna have a lot of these untitled artworks and I think it's nice to give them a name. Do I always do it? No. Should I do it? Probably. So let me give this a name. I'll call this uh, flower. <laughs> I could uh, yeah, I could definitely come up with a more interesting name, but I'll just call this flower and let's put the emoji. Actually, no, I don't want the emoji. Let's just call it flower. Flower art. Done. So basically you can rename all of your files if you'd like to. I think it's just a great way to keep things organized. But as I said, I don't always do it, but you know what? Sometimes it's nice to have things organized. So the last thing I wanted to talk about, and I would say this is really important, so please do keep listening is backups, backups, backups. Because if you lose everything here, that would be so sad. So it's important to create backups. So how do I create backups? So I don't back up everything. I'll back up the files that I will definitely need in the future. So let's say I wanted to back up all the files in this particular stack. What I would do is I would just go to select, go here and then share and then share it as a Procreate file and then put it onto Dropbox or iCloud. That way it's definitely backed up. You can also back it up as a PNG if you'd like, but I like to back up as a Procreate file because that way I can bring that file back into Procreate and use it with all the different layers. So I do think it's a good idea from time to time to back up your files. If you have iCloud, you can connect that directly and it will back up your files as well. So I'll show you where I have done that. So you can go into your settings. So you can go into your settings and then tap on your Apple ID. I have not shown mine for privacy reasons and I'm basically in the Apple ID mode and it will show you iCloud and then apps using iCloud, go to show all and scroll and then make sure that you have it turned on for Procreate. So you just do that. I had it turned off just to show you, but it's usually turned on and you can turn it off as well. I would not suggest turning it off, keep it on so that way your Procreate app is backed up to iCloud. So to recap, I would suggest backing up your files because you don't wanna lose them. So I have a backup that goes to iCloud and then I also back up the files individually into Dropbox. That way they're in two different places. Now, the last thing I wanted to show you is if you tap on Procreate right here, it will give you information about the Procreate app. So that's how you can find information on which version you have. Because sometimes you're on a different version from somebody else. How do you find out which version got 
just tap on the word procreate from the gallery and you can restore the example artworks if you want from here and you can also start your gallery recovery from here if for some reason you've lost your gallery i would not suggest clicking on that otherwise so that's pretty much it for the procreate gallery i still have some cleaning up to do here so that's it for today i hope you learned a bunch of different things from this video if you did please do give it a thumbs up because that helps other people find this video and i will see you in the next video Bye.